Welcome back everyone to the program. Uh, as informed to you uh, before, we are on the road this week. We're uh, coming to you from Singapore and uh, tonight I have the pleasure of having the company of the CEO of Viber, Rakutan um, uh, Damal Agoye. Did I pronounce that right? Jamila Gawa. That is fine. <laughs> That's fine. I'm, 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 Sincerely apologize for that. Um, Sri Lankan names are not easy either. <laughs> we have a very lengthy name. Welcome, uh, Jamal, um, to the program. Um, I want to have a discussion with you with regard to how technology is uh, literally moving around in the world and what kind of a role Viber is playing uh, in the world over. Telecommunication seems to be the one that is taking over every single space of our day-to-day -day life. We wake up with our phones, we go to sleep with our phones. This is, this is the concept. And... Uh, some see it as something very negative, and some see it, see it as something really positive. Facebook, um, with regard to Cambridge Analytica, is where this entire thing that mm -hmm. popped up, and we got to know apparently uh, our data, which we put out there, was used um, in a very malicious way in order to target certain uh, voter groups, in order to pursue them to vote towards a certain party. Now, that uh, happened in the United States. We really do not know whether it's happening el happened elsewhere in the world, but we know that there is targeted marketing. Uh, a lo in lots of social media platforms, we see the targeted marketing is where they try to actually get the users to pitch towards where they want them to go. Now, uh, Sri Lanka is currently uh, heading for a presidential election. Uh, it's going to happen in another uh, three, four, uh, four weeks. So, uh, at an atmosphere like that, one of the key things that we've been discussing and we've been trying to figure out is the fact that the spread of fake news. Uh, spread of fake news has been a, a big issue towards the country. And organizations, what we've seen in the past, is like that organizations like Facebook, WhatsApp, um, did not come forward in order to say, okay, we're going to put this, 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 this. These checklists are going to be placed, and we're going to make sure that the people of Sri Lanka uh, being given the best service so that they can actually have proper information rather than fake in information. What has Viber done? So, so th this is a very important topic, and, and, uh, and um, when you say it happened in the U.S., I mean, well, we heard about it in the U.S., but when there is a yeah. good idea somewhere, in general, this idea is generalized. So I'm not accusing anyone, but I doubt that it happened only in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with the Cambridge Analytica scandal is not only the fact that Facebook used this information, because Facebook shared this information with a lot of other people, and, and those people were at another objective. What we try to do is, um, um, what we try to do is basically to First of all, stay away from any kind of uh, political advertising. So at Viber, for example, we have, we have a policy which is we don't take political ads. We don't do that. It's a lot of money that we don't take because there is a lot of money involved by candidates mm. to make ads. And we don't do that. We stay away from this. That's one thing. The second thing is when we have, um, um, regarding the content and the, the, the spread of fake news, we try to do three things. One is to use artificial intelligence to target, to, to identify behaviors that are not normal. When you, when you have a fake news kind of source in general, it has been created not that long ago. It may come from different countries. The IP addresses may, may come from countries that are not logical with the content, etc., etc. <coughs> so there are ways to flag some sources of, uh, of news that may be wrong. And by this alert, then we can investigate a little bit more manually, physically, with human beings looking at the content to see if there is something bad in it. It's not easy, because what is fake? Sometimes some ideas or some political promise can be seen as fake by one side, but not fake by another side, mm -hmm. right? So it's not easy. What we try to do is really to, to fight the, 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 the fake news that are a, a fake fact. People, somebody saying, for example, that uh, 50 people have been killed uh, in a street when it doesn't exist. We try to fight this, and artificial intelligence help, people help, and users help. Because when you have a lot of users, you may have also a lot of reporting from those users that can alert us to clean that. It's a challenge for everyone. It's, it's obviously a challenge for everyone, and it's a challenge for the democracy in general, and uh, for all democracies in the world. Uh, the Sri Lankan government, three times uh, in the past two years, shut down 
I know. Uh, all, all social media communication side, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Viber, WhatsApp, mm -hmm. all were shut down. That was purely to stop the spread of fake news or, or uh, racist hatred messages that was just going throughout. Um, one thing the government came back and said was the reason for them to do this was mainly because the, the uh, organizations were not responding favorably. Do you have any kind of tangible people, an office, a place within Sri Lanka where anybody can physically come, sit down, have a conversation and say, look here, this is our problem. How can you help? So, yes, we have a team in Sri Lanka. Um, I'll be very humble on the topic. This topic is a real big topic and we want to progress and want to cooperate. Um, we don't like when the government block all social communication in the country. But we can understand. It happens. It, it, it happens last week in Iraq, for example. Big protests in Iraq and the entire government, the government just blocked all social communication. We hate that kind of situation, but we can understand it because we are not, we are not against governments, we are not against the society, we are for the citizens and if the problem of security is there, we need to fix it. If the only way for government to stabilize the situation is to cut this, we have to accept it. What we want to do is to create the condition that the government will not have this as the only solution to fix the problem. And that's what we try to bring. But it's not always easy because of the languages, of the localization. Sometimes, I mean, we don't even know. Sometimes, if look at some countries like Philippines where there are, there are tens of dialects. The, 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 the spread of fake hmm. news in some dialects will be very difficult for anyone, for any artificial intelligence to make that happen. So it's a new challenge. Um, the only thing we can do is, is to commit to invest a lot in the topic because it's a real topic. Now, organizations like Waiba are international organization, which means you belong to the international community. Of course. Yeah, despite you being, uh, you know, you start up at one location, does not mean that you, you only care for that particular country or, or that uh, particular place because you have users all around the world. So why not recruit people from the local uh, countries so they understand exactly where, where, what these dialects are, what these languages are? Why, why not take that part? We do it. It's, it's just difficult. What's it's, the difficulty? Find the right people. Because these people have to have uh, the right skills and the right language and, uh, and the right ability to make that work. Um, and, we, and we need also to protect ourselves. What about we recruit a person who is not, uh, who has a different objective in mind, for example? Mm. So we need to protect ourselves. So it's not only one person, it's a, it's a group of people that has to. So it's, we are doing it on a daily basis. At Viber, we, we have 30 countries in the world where we have a, a market share above 50%. Market share being uh, the number of users of Viber divided by the number of smartphones, which means that we represent a, a big tool of communication for those countries. In those 30 countries, we have the objective to participate into the resolution of this problem by recruiting people. And we have people. We have people in Russia. We have people in Ukraine. We have people in Eastern Europe. We have people in Sri Lanka. We have people in Vietnam. We have people in Philippines. We have people, and we are growing those teams. But those businesses, those jobs, are new jobs. And we need people that are able to speak some specific languages, understand technology, speak English correctly as well, because we need to communicate with the central. So it takes time sometimes to find the right person. Do you to think make that a country like Sri Lanka does not have the adequate resources as of now? No, we have. We, we, Sri Lanka is a, is a lesser problem than other countries. But uh, first of all, because the, the English level is very, very good. Uh, the problem of Sri Lanka would be more the fact that there are two languages and that we need to, uh, need to be able to, uh, to handle properly. Um, and this is something where we are doing now. I mean, we have already a, a small team, about 10 people in Sri Lanka, and we're going to strengthen this, uh, this team for specifically for this problem. Shmuel, I want to talk about another issue here as well. Now, uh, applications, which I do not want to say um, out loud, um, there are applications which is now going to the um, younger audience, the teens, which in return um, we know is mostly used towards exchanging um, personal pics uh, of, of vulgar nature. This is spreading like a massive problem. Um, it's, it's, it's contaminating houses, it's contaminating families, 
um, literally uh, minds who do not have the ability to understand the gravity of it is, is sharing this. Um, how is Viber combating that? Uh, we, we, I mean, we don't invest in, this, in that segment. I mean, uh, Viber, is a, Viber is an app who's targeting adults, young adults, but not teens. And um, it's been a topic, you know, when you, when you see internally, when you see numbers of uh, the number of users of these kind of apps, there is always someone say, well, why shouldn't they do this? Because it's very exciting in terms of numbers. We don't, because there are a lot of problems with that. And um, Viber is a communication tool, universal one. It's not a, it's not a game for teenagers. It's, it's, not a, it's not an app that teens are going to use to, to, be, uh, to, to be bad to their parents or to, 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 to play games in, in the back of their parents. It's a communication platform that we hope people will use for their entire life. So our strategy is much more to bring more serious services inside, like payment services, um, uh, booking services, and other services that could be embedded into a chat than to add uh, these kind of services that, that are the, an open door to a lot of issues in terms of moderation. Facebook uh, does not allow nudity in, in their content. It gets blocked. Uh, it, yeah. It, 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 yeah, and to a certain extent, yeah. Yes, to a certain extent. Um, that is mainly because they read there's an algorithm literally looking after mm -hmm. it. Uh, is there that kind of a technology within messaging apps that can actually look into things like that for and actually flag it? For public content, yes, not for private content. For private content at Viber, we consider that if you want to exchange with your friend of yours pictures of you naked, it's your problem. I mean, it's your, it's mm. your, it's your, your freedom. Uh, if you put that kind of pictures on a public section, like in a community, for example, yes, there, is, there are tools that will flag this content and will probably block it automatically or even block the entire community if, if it's too much. So um, The other thing that I want to touch on is the fact that um, artificial intelligence. Um, this seems to be uh, on the rise. Te technological mm -hmm. companies are actually utilizing this because uh, it seems to be the, uh, I, d I don't want to say the easy way forward, but uh, uh, easy way towards solving lots of issues that is at hand, which is popping up with uh, new technology. Uh, how is Viber addressing that? So we, we are investing massively in, uh, together with Rakuten, actually. Rakuten has created a special division. We're talking about 200 engineers now in this division, and they are working on artificial intelligence product. And uh, um, there are a couple of, uh, yeah, there are different products inside, but one of the key products is the content moderation. Um, it, it's not an easy one. It's a, it, it's a necessary tool, but it's not an easy one because uh, there are a lot of content which are on the red line or on the gray line, yeah. and it's not easy. I mean, uh, we, obviously, you see some pictures, it's super easy to, to, to say that uh, they the <coughs> should be out, but in some cases, it's not easy. So um, same thing here, a, a lot of progress has been made by different technology, different company, in terms of voice recognition, in terms of text recognition, in terms of image recognition, and those investments will bring more security to the users. We are completely in this, in this context, and more than anyone else, because once more, our objective is to get users to use Viber for their entire life. I mean, we, we want them to use Viber until their last day, and, uh, and, um, and then we don't want to, on the road, these people get exposed to content that they don't want, they don't like. Finally, uh, Jamal, um, 10 years down the line, into the future, yeah. how do you see Viber? Well, I mean, it depends on what, you, what, what your question is about. If the question is about the, the kind of product, I mean, the product could change a lot. I mean, we, we, have, we have a little bit less than 10 years old. We are nine years old now. Uh, nobody could have imagined nine years ago where we would be today neither in terms of volume of usage nor in terms of product itself. So it's difficult to look at it, but if I, if I give you a little bit of my vision, I think that um, I think we need to go to, we, we, we are going in toward a direction of uh, speeder, speed, speed, and speed. And then if you look at, we think about it, the easiest way to send a message is to talk, and the quickest way to receive a message is to read. And probably those language issues must be solved as well. So I suppose that in the future, which is probably less than 10 years, I should be able to uh, send you a message in French, and you will receive it in whatever language mm. you like, in text. That would be really helpful. <laughs> in text. And then we would have a conversation like that at a, at a, at a normal speed, like this. And I really think we're going in this direction. 
I really also think that there will be a much better way to, uh, to monitor uh, um, uh, content and to evaluate um, things that should not be inside the public conversation. But I also hope that we will be able to keep the protection of privacy of the users because I really care about that. I really, I really hope that we can play a role in protecting the privacy of users. It's not, it's not because I think that a lot of people have the, have, uh, are doing bad things. It's just as because I think that there are subjects that are not supposed to be public, uh, that 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 are from from that are really private for users, and we re I really think that it's important for them. Jumal, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for this special discussion with the CEO of Weiber, Jamal Agwe. Thank you very much for joining me on this discussion. We'll see you soon.